lots of different openings, whereas the Lincoln Field, their stadium was very enclosed. And I couldn't actually see her um, where she was, but once I heard everyone screaming, I knew she was out. <laughs> so whenever I heard everyone cheering, I was like, okay, she must be flying around. Yeah. Is there a reason you choose different release spots, or is that just... Sometimes wind, yeah. uh, that's really the big thing, is... It's, it's, yeah. It is really cool to watch them. I mean, we work with these birds daily, and it, it never gets old. Indy's first flight, I'll never forget, her first flight for a game, I'm watching her, and it was a long flight. Because then I realized, I'm like, oh wait, that's my job. Like, I, I gotta go out there. <laughs> you were watching. And I was just like tearing up, I'm like, oh, look at her go. And I was like, oh wait, I need it's to your baby. be out. Yeah, so. Our flight, it shows there. It's at 4 p.m. The first shows are always the most rough. One, because it's hot, but then two, because the birds are all getting into it. Yeah. So we never know what's going to happen. Uh, like I said, that peregrine falcon, sometimes he'll go sit on the roof for a while and make me just sit out there spinning that roof. <laughs> yeah. But it is, that's one reason it's so fun is because we never know what's going to happen. them this far south. Really they're going to be out west. Golden eagles are mostly catching and eating small mammals. So they need those really big areas, big open land to hunt their prey. Bald eagles, they're mostly fish eaters. So Alabama's a perfect place for them. We have lots of rivers, lakes, bodies of water. And so bald eagles you can find all over Alabama. Now there are some golden eagles that come through every year. Our state actually has trackers on them, so they actually track their migration. But usually, if the golden eagle flies this far south, they realize it's not a good place, and they move on. In Alabama, you have three species. One is that peregrine falcon. Here we go, right behind us. For birds, it's dangerous to have them too heavy. One, because they spend a lot of time perching, and so they can get pressure shores on their feet. Now, as he's being flown, what you're going to be hearing is a bell. Wild birds, of course, not wearing that bell. We have the bells on them, so we can find them. When we're flying them, we also typically will have trackers on them. So that way, if they were to fly off, we could find them. Now, the red tail hawks. Like I said, this is the largest hawk around here. <laughs> a lot of people will call us, tell us, hey, I just saw this huge eagle, and it carried off my neighbor's dog. I mean, we hear all kinds of stories. Usually they see one of these guys, nowhere near as big as they describe, but in flight, they look really big. And people see these birds, and they are worried about their dogs and their cats. Found her perch. But this bird, he's about three pounds, largest, maximum at four pounds, only capable of carrying. And you've probably seen these guys, you just didn't realize what you were looking at. Yeah, they're hanging around those telephone poles, cell phone wires. One way to tell is there's not going to be other songbirds around. That's what these guys would love to catch and eat. That's a kestrel, is that what they say? So again, this person is going to be independent. My name is Amanda, and I am the assistant director here at the Auburn University Raptor Center. And we are a education and rehabilitation facility. We get in about 300 
injured raptors that undergo rehabilitation. People can find injured birds and our goal is to get them healthy and released back into the wild. We also have an education department where we do about 300 educational shows each year. We're also known for having the Auburn Eagles and so we do fly the Eagles before the Auburn games. We are open to the public every Friday before Auburn home games for our football fans and feathers presentations. You can also support us by booking a private tour, which you can do on our website or by booking a program offsite. We do all sorts of different outreach programs and you can donate directly to help us again with our rehabilitation efforts and our outreach efforts.